All righty. Cool. And we're live. Great. Welcome, everybody. My name is Gabriel Quinn. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, character designer, world builder today. We're doing some world building today. Um, and yeah, we're going to be working on one of my personal projects that I created last year. It's one of my favorite projects I've ever done, ever um, yet to be completed, because I don't even know if you can complete projects like this. But this is an independent IP that I've been developing for quite some time, on and off here and there. So we're going to be working on it today, and it is called, aptly named, Fish World, because it's all about fish. It's a world all about fish. So <laughs> we're going to be diving into this today. So first things first, what I'm going to do is drop the stream link into our community Discord. And if you want to join the community Discord, you can do so through the Patreon in the description. It's three bucks. You get to join in on all of our fun challenges we do and our hangouts that we do. It's a good time. And uh, yeah, everyone on it is just fantastic um, and very supportive. It's a very supportive space. So just going to announce that there. I'm live. Um, oh, I'll do the right. Man, running a Discord, it's like, uh, it's interesting. Oh, forgot even to add the link. Well, there you go. Boom. Um, yeah, <laughs> running a Discord is interesting. There's a lot that goes into it, but it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, let's get back to what it is that we're doing here. Alrighty. Oh, we got Benji here and Mila. Welcome, guys. Welcome. <laughs> cool. Um, Benji loves fish so much. Mojo's here. Welcome, Mojo. All right. Super cool. Super cool. Um, Alrighty. So, 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 so. Very fun. Very fun indeed. Um, we have our wonderful thumbnail PSD. <laughs> Um, making thumbnails, it's interesting. I, uh, starting to understand, like, how I want to make them, you know? And he says, what is this fishy business? So, you know, I went through this whole project early on in the stream, um, or early on in the kind of stream journey where I showed all the different facets of this project, all that different fun stuff. So we're just going to close out and go through a little bit of the journey to how all of this came to be, pretty much, this fish world idea. So I'm just going to uncheck this. I have it here in one of the most uh, terribly organized um, <laughs> PSDs I've ever had in my life. Mojo said, I needed a distraction. Lol, I've been having a rough time lately. Thanks, Gabriel. Oh, dude. So sorry you're having a rough time. Glad to be a distraction. Hopefully an inspiration. So this all started when I did this hat. I was just like, someone was talking about like, oh, you know, I want to do props I want to do this I want to do that like how do I go about doing props or whatever and I was like ah well you know you like you need to be able to turn around a prop and I they were like well what does that mean so I just kind of sketched out a little turnaround of a hat you know like or showing the different angles of a hat even looking back on it I'm seeing mistakes and stuff right but I did this hat and there was someone in the call um who was like oh uh that looks kind of like a fish and I was like huh so I turned it into a fish and when I turned the hat into a fish, I was like, well, who is this guy? So I drew the guy who would be wearing the fish hat. And then I drew some fish that would be draped on top of the hat. And <laughs> Benji says mega eyebrow and mustache game. Let's go. Let's go. Um, but yeah, so we have this kind of like fish man nobility, right? And uh, that's kind of like where where this started to build from and kind of like uh, explode out from. Oh, we got Jake in the chat. Welcome, Jake. If it's the same Jake that just joined the Patreon, welcome. Happy to have you here. Love you, man. Um, oh, we got the whole crew popping in. Let's go. Um, <laughs> oh, you guys are so supportive to each other. That's like really cool. <laughs> nice. You got Zella in the chat fantastic nabs is here all right we got everybody piling in so you know i always say this every time i'll say it again this is a totally interactive live stream so you can feel free to ask any questions you want about world building about whatever but we're going to be talking mostly today about explorative world building figuring out like okay what am i doing here you know how do i do how do i do this? how do i go about this if i have no ideas what do i do so we're going to be talking about that pretty much um 
or doing some demos of that after I go through the project, essentially. We also got Marcus here. Welcome, Marcus. Um, nice. Cool. So I drew this guy, and I just wrote at the top, garb of the nobility. When you title something, you can work backwards from that. It's like a, it's a helpful thing to do. So you can see how this design and this idea kind of came into play later. In any case, I continued to push, and I was like, well, who are these people behind, trailing behind, who are carrying this guy's, uh, you know, cape? And um, the the women that I sketched this ages ago, um, and I was like, okay, well, the women who are trailing behind, they're they're carrying this thing, and they they have to have their necks and their shoulders exposed. And uh, initially, it was like a costume choice because it looked cool. I was like, whoa, these like big open collars are really interesting, but the main guy is covered, but they're not. What does that mean? So I'm giving myself kind of questions to answer just through having fun. So then I was like, okay, well, you know, this guy's got a fish hat and the servants that are following kind of have almost these little sardine can-esque heads or whatever. Like it's, it's strange, right? So I'm like, all right, well, well, what if there were like airships? What would that look like? I'm like, all right, let's, let's try, let's look at nature and see what's there. So I thought about the Remora ship, how it sticks onto stuff. And I decided like, okay, if we're going to do a fun airship, we'll do the big balloon. We'll have the engines and the main cockpit kind of be like a remora design. Like it's sticking to the bottom of the balloon, which is like a larger fish. So that way, you know, aesthetic follows form, follows, you know, the traditions of the world, right? This is a very decorative world, it would seem, based on everything else we've done. Um, Emmy says, I have an IP surrounding ancient Greek and Soviet culture, and I've had so much trouble world building for it, despite my interest for the story. This stream will be hu a huge help. Oh, I'm really glad. I hope you figure something. I hope you get some value from this. Um, another thing I tried was this kind of weird sketch, which here looks terrible. It's a terrible design, but I was like, what if there's this like s like fish thing that has like sacks and it's carrying stuff like the start of an idea it's the first thing you put down start of an idea so let's continue on through we kind of push the shapes a little bit blah, blah 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 and then i was like okay well let's take that fishing vessel vessel with all the sacks and think like all right well how do i make this work well what if right it carries big fish nets maybe they're fishing from airships not from boats so that kind of started this whole journey of like okay let's like, let's make this actually feasible. Like, let's try to make this realistic. Let's do our best here. Um, and in doing so, it's like little things, right? Um, oh, Sunfi says, can't join live, but definitely watching it later. Have fun, everybody. Aw, thanks for joining in, Sunfi, just to say hi. All the best, and take care with your day. Um, <laughs> Colin's in the chat. Welcome, Colin. Colin says, happy over the garden wall season, everyone. <laughs> That's funny. It is fall. It's fall. The leaves are starting to change. It's like, oh. I love fall, but I don't, I just can't get the fear of winter out of my mind with fall. It's like a weird, it's like strange. Maybe I'm, maybe I, maybe I'm just like a, a doom person. Maybe I just, maybe I'm just imagining doom. So, okay. Uh, we have this big airship, right? Um, <laughs> we're thinking like, how do we make this realistic? Well, one of the ways is just like kind of the sort of netting and stuff, right? So if we take our kind of HB brush and we kind of have kind of match the sort of area in which we're doing this, like, so for instance, we have some kind of machinery here, some kind of deck here, and there, there's like these nets kind of attached to this sort of area here. So there's some kind of function happening. It's not 100% realistic yet, but it's interesting, right? And then maybe I was like, oh, well, what if there's like a mouth that opens up and there's some kind of like propulsion-y thing? So you take that one step further, and now we have kind of the more refined design, which is, for instance, um, this fish here, which with its mouth opens up, and there's like a giant kind of like fish ballista that shoots out the nets, shoots out the nets into the ground, right? And then they they uh, it detaches and gets hoisted up here. So it releases from its firing point here, and then it just kind of like slowly gets dragged up until it like joins the pile of nets, right? There's only so much it can carry. There's only so much whatever, but this is kind of the idea here. Um, <laughs> Benji said, y'all missing out of the fun of winter. It's my favorite season. Ah, oh, man. I think, I think if when I was a kid, I had access to more like, I don't know, winter sports or stuff like that, it would be fun for me. Winter is just so like, 
it, it's just I just remember like walking to school every day when I was a boarding school in Canada, like in this tiny town. And uh, I would just like walk from the residence to the school and it would take like half an hour to walk and it was cold and it sucked. And like that's for me, that's winter. It's every day doing that, not being able to do anything like it's just like, you know, I think I think uh, there's more fun stuff to do. I mean, this is my first uh, winter officially living in New York City. So who knows? Find some fun stuff to do. Eh? <laughs> um, yeah. Alrighty, right. Let's keep on going here. So I don't want to spend too much time on just review or just talking about ideas, but I don't know. I hope this is helpful. I hope this is helpful to you guys. So whenever too much time goes by between streams, like I forget how to talk on camera. But yeah, so like this kind of mouth opens up and closes. It hinges open and closed here. It's pretty fun. The Canada A slipped out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I grew up in California. I moved to Bermuda when I was a kid. I lived in Canada and then I was in England for university. So like a little bit of everywhere slips out for me sometimes and like <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so continuing on, I did a fish biplane because like, why not? It's so cool, right? This is cool. But yeah, let's continue on. Let's continue on. Then I decided, okay, well, this is a fish world. What kind of like props are here, right? What kind of prop? And he says, Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> Not Mr. Worldwide. Mr. English speaking country. <laughs> Not Mr. Worldwide at all. Um, but yeah, I started to imagine these props, right? Um, so I started to imagine like, you know, you know, like old timey names where, uh, where like it, it was like, you know, like, for instance, like, Dick used to be a normal name, but now it has an inappropriate connotation. Like, what if there were, like, titles to things that now are strange, but, like, then were just totally normal, you know? Like, they're almost, like, euphemistic or something. Just playing around with those ideas is really fun. Um, but, you know, you got the squid ink pot here. Uh, you got the, the fish oil ambrosia here, the sea snake oil, the crab elixir, algae. You got the kelp is help perfume. Uh, a whole container of fish eyeballs and all this stuff. Like, I was just coming up with these ideas because, like, what is populating this so this world, right? Zella says swore. <laughs> That's so funny. I remember I had my buddy Luke on stream very early on when I was going to – I was going to try to do, like, a buddy stream every Friday, which just, like, it's impossible to wrangle your friends, man. It, you can't do it. So, in any case – um, he came on and he just like just like f-bombed immediately and i was like oh dude <laughs> trying to keep it chill um but i kind of boiled it down to these main jars that i liked a lot you know just kind of like uh hero prop images right but even even this is like old stuff for me this is last year so even now i would approach this in a very different way um imagining ooh, if there were swords what would the materials be how would they look blah blah blah, blah. like how would i design the scabbards that this that that who would be using them would it be attached to some kind of industry? Like, what's going on? Oh, HD's here. Let's go. Um, HD says, love seeing Fish World again. Buddy, me too. This idea was funny. It was like, this was called the Town of War or whatever, like a play on like the Portuguese Man of War or something. But um, this idea was kind of like, what if there was a flying miniature, not city, but like a town almost that was dredging up kelp so it followed the migration pattern of like kelp forests in the ocean and it was dredging up kelp continuously and burning it as biofuel to keep it flying. It's like not really possible, but the idea is there. Like the idea is almost feasible. You can kind of be like, huh, wait, that could actually, that could maybe work. And if we're in a fantasy world, which we are in, you know, a grounded fantasy world, mind you, but like maybe this kelp is rich in some kind of material that would then allow it to, you know, ignite into flames, like rich in a certain kind of oil or something, you know? So this uh, this city, it may entirely be possible that that's the case, right? Um, and maybe their way of capturing and insulating hot air is like hyper efficient and they're able to like really seal it and make sure that it stays in the air and stays afloat, you know? because that was this whole thing is that, you know, these kind of flying cities, right? And what's cool about this idea is that um, you can kind of just continue to push it. And uh, let's take down the flow to like 50 here. No, 25, 25, 21, 21. Um, and you could even start to see like, oh, well, you know, like what if 
there were these like railings that went out and there was like all these little things that kind of happen and multiple levels to the thing and all that stuff and like ships would come and they would they would dock here to do trade with these people and you know they would like arrive and leave and you would kind of see them come and go and you know like what would happen if there was like an attack right and there was like an attacking force you know coming on like broadsiding them and they were like you know maybe shooting or something and like how would they fire back or how would they defend themselves or would they have some kind of security system all these things we're trying to figure out as we're building out this world right but you can even start to see like these little things happening here and there with the implication of the design like follow the implication that your design has right um oh we got seth here welcome seth let's go and sunny welcome sunny um but yeah you can start to see like thinking about this kind of stuff so we had a really rough sketch for like what we maybe wanted the town to be like, right? Like we wanted the idea that there were three levels, clear dichotomies. There was the kind of overworld up here with, you know, like, like, uh, like, oops, like beautiful cascading, you know, towers that are really unique and like strange architecture and like weird archways and oh, kill the fly. Nice. Call me Mr. Miyagi out here, swatting these flies. Um, but yeah, like strange architecture and like weird houses and businesses and all this strange stuff happening up there. And the middle of the world, you know, it's much more conservatively built, much more, you know, kind of, um, you know, making do with kind of what you have kind of deal, but still having that deco nouveau feel, still having that kind of like decorative, although albeit simple kind of design that's happening in this world. But there's a third section that I wanted to focus on, which was kind of like the underworld here, which was kind of this strange stilt town where everything is built like pretty much right underneath the top of the town. So there's like a whole world. The idea is you're walking along this boardwalk here, right? And oh, we got some Japanese in the chat. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Um, but yeah, the idea is that you <laughs> walk through the, the boardwalk right on top of this town and underneath is like a whole world right and there's entrances and exits and stuff when i was designing this i was thinking like how do i make a world that's like unique and totally usable for anything like if it was going to be a game if it was going to be a, a feature film if it was going to be you know a, a whatever like a for a, like a backdrop for an even a novel if someone wanted to write a novel and this was like visual material for them or something right i wanted to have that kind of thinking going on um and very limited ways to get up into the the, the highest overworld though but the idea is that this world is built on this kind of like black rock foundation of an island and kind of like it sort of jets out around the island in, in a way. Um, but the, you know, all the richest people, they live kind of on this island up here. Jarrett says, hey, Gabriel, good to see you. I love world building with lots of water. So much possibilities with deep water. Good choice. Hey, thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. We got more Japanese. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. Um... But yeah, this is one of my favorite worlds, right? So that was the idea behind this kind of world is there's kind of this under sort of stilt village thing happening where the tide goes all the way up, right up until underneath them. And then when it drops all the way down, there's like a lot of stuff you can do down here, right? Like you can, you can fish, you can do this, you can kind of maybe there's tidal pools happening, right? Because if this was a volcanic island, there's always a ledge around, right? So let's say it is a volcanic island. Um, if this is a volcanic, because that's the only way you could have a stilt village on top, right? So top down the reason i know this is because i grew up in bermuda and bermuda is a tiny island that looks like this it's like a little fish hook with like a little bit that kind of comes out and has a whole thing and whatever that's kind of loosely what it is but not actually um and i live right here beep beep where i used to um but this island had this kind of like plateau around it right because there's only so much that's above the water but the volcano used to be this big before it kind of like settled and raised and settled and raised we got lashy in the chat let's go so if we're imagining our black rock island right of like super tough volcanic rock tough rock that our town is built off of there is going to be like a ledge that goes around right so the town would extend maybe to the edge of around this ledge eh but anywhere exceeding this ledge which is you'll have a clear delineation um you can even see it from google google maps i think right 
Lashy says, I'm so AFK these days. Dude, that's not even a bad thing, man. I wonder if it will give me... a view. Okay, okay, we kind of got it, sort of. Yeah, here we go, here we go. Check this out. So, this is Bermuda. This is where I used this is where I lived for many years of my life. And here you can see the dark water and the light water. So this used to be a volcano, right? But the only parts that are above water is the, that you can actually build on or have land is, is here. So anything outside of that zone is like super dangerous. So we're following that same rule when it comes to the island. So what's actually poking out of the water and then what is the actual ledge surrounding it? So we can have a lot of fun with that. We can even skew it so we have like an asymmetrical view, right? So you can have the kind of black rock peak sort of appear here, kind of have a peak right if we were to do this like topologically and then we have the other various areas and stuff but it but it's built out on this boardwalk right that's the idea so we're following that that actual real geological phenomena for this world and it's important i feel to do that kind of stuff because it gives you a sense of excitement towards the real realism that's happening or that could be happening um oh oh Everybody's in. Everybody's in. Lashy says I have I have lots of work. I have lots to work on, but my work time is limited per day because my back situation. It's rough, man. That's rough. <laughs> hey, no worries, dude. No worries, Lashy. We miss you, but um, it's good that you're taking care of yourself and you're staying on track with what you need to do. That's powerful. So going beyond that, um, we I kind of started to sketch out who may live underneath the this world right so like who who lives underneath the uh the kind of boardwalk city and stuff like that and some ideas were these kind of like women who maybe like hunted fished underneath you know so they use like uh bow fishing spear fishing all that stuff they were like draped in eel skin and all that stuff i kind of started to push it a little bit with like the kind of bird skull you know again a year ago please please don't please don't judge my art and uh, some like eel skin ladies again please please don't judge me um but i did like the ideas i thought this one was cool this one was like pretty okay which i i just love the idea though it was it was interesting um and then we had crab guy obviously gotta have crab guy crab guy uh he is you got crab armor don't mess with him but if you defeat crab guy if you do if you manage to defeat crab guy you know what you get you can guess it crab drink whatever that does it's very bioshock but hey crab guy yeah you know i can paint i don't just sketch scribble all the time i can i can do some stuff sometimes not actually i can't paint i don't know how to paint so then i had the idea of like okay well then there's some kind of like strange twilight zone stuff happening in this world because there has to be right so we've kind of marked out very very early on that there is this kind of economic distinction between the nobility and then kind of like their sort of servants and stuff and what that means and why they're covered and i'm like well if this whole world is revolving around fish they need airships to fish everything is designed around fish then it's kind of like their sort of pseudo uh, their, their pseudo ideological, you know, capitalistic God is kind of fish, right? But why? So much like any other fantasy world, you can start to have some kind of like super, you know, made up secret substance that kind of is sort of above all else, right? In Dune, it's the, the, uh, spice and all that stuff, right? Hmm. And other worlds is other things, right? So what I'm thinking here is that the actual fish themselves, because this is not our world, the actual fish themselves feed on this kind of, some of them feed on this kind of like plankton-esque material or creature or bio creature that, you know, would be stored in their fat and blah, 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 whatever. And if you eat this fish raw, if you eat the fish of this world raw, you will have euphoric and hallucinogenic experiences. But... If you eat too much, you will start to develop 
like scales and you'll start to go crazy and all of that stuff, right? There's like, uh, there's all of that stuff to think about. Oh, wait, yeah, let's go back to crab guy for a second because you guys kind of stopped on this one. So yeah, let's, let's think about crab guy here. Um, I see someone kind of marked out a couple things here. Oh my gosh, Mila, no, <laughs> no. So let's talk about why the crab guy's armor looks this way. So for me, I had a set of issues. The set of issues was how do I make crab claws fit around a guy? Everything you've ever said or everything you've ever been told about crabs is that their pincers are their danger, right? It's their danger. And then and, and any crab guy always has pincer claws. But I thought to myself, I'm like, that's been done a million times and there's no way to make that work if you're like a scrounger scavenger you can't make <clears throat> the pinchers actually have utility in terms of like their intended utility so i don't know why everyone keeps trying to do that with like certain mechanics and stuff like turning feathers into wings or this into that like things can be other things and if you look at the at a crab claw it is a very very hard very uh structurally it has structural integrity by virtue like just of its shape right and how it's created so don't mess with that at all and i'm thinking like all right what if it actually becomes like the the armor for this guy in like a unique way so what do we do we put it on the shoulder right because that's like a big piece it would cover the whole shoulder it also has that great forward feel like let's do a little quick design paint over here so we can kind of see what we're working with um so so it kind of comes forward here boom great energy same with the helmet and the helmet's the same principle right it has structural integrity it's interesting and you want to give direction again any crab guy or whatever like you know you do this with rhino guys but not really with crab guys but i'm like let's say this guy's just getting any pieces of crab he can and there's an opportunity also to kind of like mix and match and have other species and stuff. But again, we have this energy coming forward, right? We want that energy be, to be coming forward there and there, kind of in a shoulder plate, it's his helmet. But when it comes to the hands, we want to give them their own direction. So we have that here as well. And what's fun about this design is it kind of like tells you a little bit about how this guy might fight or how this guy might operate in terms of like his defensive, his offensive strategies, all that stuff. Like if this was a game, you would kind of have an idea of like how this boss would move if it was a boss. So let's see, let's keep moving. Boom, boom, boom. That was the thinking there. Um, oh, that was it. So that was it for this kind of like, oh, no, it wasn't, not even close. Uh, we had more for him actually, but it's it's in this file. Let's find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go. I kind of did a couple sketches here later on um, where you can kind of see him sort of like he's armored up. The, the points of importance are covered, you know, like uh, his head's covered, his shoulders are covered. This is all armored. And then this is armored here. So it's like he's he's presenting all armored parts to you. And then here you kind of see this sort of like armored here. He's armored, you know, on the sides, too, and the head as well. So he's, he's covering up. You can kind of see how he might hold himself. Um little scribbles for like placement and stuff but this was this was for when i was starting to put this stuff together um but yeah let's imagine like you're starting to grow these scales because you're tripping super hard right um lashy says bro my painting skills in digital are rip <laughs> me too um colin says we'd be so scared if we knew how to paint <laughs> that's an inside joke but it's a good one Mojo says, I looked it up and I still don't know what the kanji... Oh, for the Japanese in the chat. Jarrett says, does crab guy have a crab family? I have to see that species in stages. That'd be funny. <laughs> crab guy, crab... My crab family. HG says, you can't go wrong with Bioshock-esque stuff. It's true. That's true. Emmy says, I can imagine getting headbutted by him. Exactly. Like, that's kind of what you want to feel from this guy. Um, he's using crab claws, but he's not behaving like a crab necessarily. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the crabs and hallucination. Well, you can't have deep sea and random stuff without a little bit of Lovecraftian, um, kind of like influence, right? The idea that we just have no idea what's down there is part of the terror and allure of deep sea. So there are strong, heavy themes of that in this world, obviously, because we have these fish and we have this kind of like 
almost could become an addiction right but if you're like a working class family in this world and you like you kind of know what's good for you like you cook your fish you don't you don't eat your fish raw like you don't do that it's like taboo even to do that and um so like you're supposed to cook all the way through you know no tenderness no anything like that and blah blah blah, blah and, rah, rah, rah. and there are of course like secret places where they'll serve you like sushimi or whatever right it's like that kind of fun stuff oh also grim's here hey grim um yeah dude the sea is horrific it's terrifying so but also beautiful and incredible so this guy's eating fish here he's kind of a bit deranged he's lost his way you know he's wandering the streets like munching on a fish that he found you know kind of kind of acting crazy but what happens when oh yeah this is when i started to maybe try and paint it up a little bit but what happens when you get caught so you get captured if, the, if you're caught and you're like kind of tripping on fish and you're seen as to be kind of like a degenerate right or like you know kind of like a like a like we would call that like maybe like a bum in the west or whatever like someone who's kind of wandering and has no place like they'll they'll basically like throw you in this in the stocks right so they'll capture you and they'll kind of take you away this guy's like totally scaled out he doesn't know what's happening he's like he's gone so these guys will get you these guys are the city watchers or maybe we'll come up with a better name but they wear these masks that have basically they wear these masks that are in the image of a kind of like universal symbol that everybody sees when they trip too much right so maybe they're like hearing like the call of cthulhu or whatever not actually but let's say that you kind of tune into this like this uh this intense sort of like uh way of thinking and you're seeing symbols and they're they're terrifying right so this mask will like basically set off that reaction in the people who are like addicted or affected or, or like you know too far gone so they'll know if you're kind of like corrupted if you are afraid of them so these guys walk around waiting to see who who flinches and who like runs away or who can't look at them and then they'll chain you up and they'll throw you up in the stocks to like to dry you out, right? So they'll wait till all your scales fall off. They'll wait till you kind of come back to your senses. But it's hugely humiliating. Anyone who tries to help them will get like beaten away and all that stuff. Um, so that's kind of like the intense part of this world. It's like super dystopian, right? Yeah, so again, how do we even get here? I didn't even really like have an idea of like, hmm, you know, I want, I want Eldritch overlord I, I want like eldritch riot police capturing people it's like uh you you don't just come up with that stuff that stuff comes to you while you're on a journey and i've taken you guys on the journey the entire time so far so you guys know kind of what i've been doing and stuff right um let's see let's see let's see <laughs> nabs nab says the fact that crab guy the fact that crab, crab guy's family might be crab people as well allows for some really funny wordplay. <laughs> no, no, he just has crab armor. Um, Mojo says it's so, so hard to multitask right now. Multitasking is basically impossible. I'm convinced. Kipling. Welcome, Kipling. Kipling's a true homie. You guys got to go follow Kipling right now. Right now. Follow the boy. Um, you want to be a crab person so bad. Mojo says, I'm between listening to Gabriel, typing in chat, and looking at Discord and trying to do homework. That's, you're never going to get anything done. Kind Suki says, hi. Welcome, Suki. Welcome, welcome. Um, Game Lord says, is all of your art self-taught or did you attend some sort of art school? Amazing work, by the way. Any technical knowledge that I learned for art was learned through YouTube, pretty much, exclusively, like, Ahmed Alduri, Cynics, like all, all the boys. Also, my peers and friends, like recently in the past couple of years, I've been learning a lot from my friends on Discord. It's been really great, um, but mostly self-taught. But self-taught, it's a bit of a fallacy, but that's for another stream, I think. Um, Manu says, hello, Gabriel. These look amazing. Do you have any experience as a teacher or something? You are so good at explaining stuff. Yeah, I've been teaching for a while, like kind of informally. Um, actually, you guys might get a kick out of this. Well, no, I'll talk about that later. But um, yeah, I do have experience as a teacher, for sure. And I did go to art school, but it was 
a project based brief based thing and i learned a lot about comics i learned a lot about project management creative process stuff there um but everything i know about world building and all this stuff was self-taught um too good at explaining stuff well i hope it's just it's helping that's that's the that's the goal Ah, <laughs> Kipling. <laughs> Greetings from the DMV, brother. Good luck to you. <laughs> Colin's right. Oh no, doing homework and it's going awful. Well, hey, you 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 have an opportunity to learn something, Grim. Right? Um, well, you've already seen Mila. Yeah, definitely Lyric Mojo. I know you're here. I feel your presence. You're a true homie. All right. Well, let me just let me let me toss something at you guys. Let's see if you guys get a kick out of this. So I'm thinking about running a class. Um, I've been workshopping it for a long time and I'm pretty much like uh, gearing up to do it. This is kind of the maybe soft launch, even the idea. I'm thinking November is when I'm going to run it. Uh, but I'll show you guys the image essentially for what we're going to be doing. So the idea is to do a, this is a little, this is basically an ad break, isn't it? A seven week character crash course, right? Or world building story, I, you know, title, title work in progress, right? Cause it's, it's about characters, but it's like not about like anatomy or drawing. It's, it's about ideas. And the idea is there's going to be like basically uh, seven weeks, seven intense projects. It's going to be tight and, and intense and really fun and really great. And um, the idea is that you're going to be taken through all these briefs and you're going to learn a huge overview about stuff. So like the first assignment of the first week is if you give a kid a sword, like what is that? What happens? You know, the spectrum of villains, uh, simple heroes made better, animal sidekicks. Why do you need them? Knights and squires learning about duos, mentor, mentee, like all these different kind of relationships. You know, the resenting duo that resent each other, The you know, all that stuff like dynamic pairings. And lastly, if they can fly, which is like a really fun uh, use case of like giving your character a certain capacity that has narrative implication. Um, so I was thinking about running this course for seven weeks. I'm still, ah, man, um, it's really like a demand thing, man. If there's people who want to do it, I'll do it. Uh, but I'm nervous. I'm nervous about running a course. It would be the first public thing I do. I've done private mentorships and all that stuff for a while, but, um, Zella says, Gabriel, will you do the seven week course more than once? Uh, most likely. Eventually, I want to turn each section each section into a self study thing that you can get on like Gumroad or something. But I do want to do a one on one kind of mentorship style stuff, right? That's exactly right, Jarrett. The plan is to do do it on Gumroad later. Um, <laughs> oh man, you guys are awesome. But um, <laughs> but there you go. You asked, you you will receive. All right, back to the thing. Colin says, lol, the directions giving a kid a sword could take. Exactly, exactly. So that's what's so exciting about it. And people don't think like this because you get you you get to a white piece of paper and you're like, oh, I got I gotta draw a character, and you do the most generic thing ever. You give yourself no time, no opportunity, no direction, nothing. And then you have you just draw a Katarna girl again, right? Or guy with gun again. Like, you know, I'm guilty of that, obviously. Everyone is, but there's so much more you can do. So much more. So much more. But yeah, so so let's keep going. Um, then I did more designs for airships, thinking about like, ooh, what if they're undulating and cool and all this fun stuff? Um, and kind of this idea of like a lure vessel. What if there was a, a airship that like lured fish to the circle and had this... Uh, Marcus says, I love when Gabriel gets so excited about character design. Dude, I love character design it's so cool like i'm gonna say i'm gonna say one name and you're gonna and, and know what i'm talking about darth vader N you don't even have to know star wars the image is in your mind you know what that is you know how he sounds you know what he does you know it's like that's power man that's so powerful character design is more than drawing it's so much more beyond drawing um, Jake says you do mentorships currently, Gabriel. Yeah. Kind of by request. I do mentorships usually if I have time, which right now I do. If anyone's interested in mentorships, hit me up. My contact should be in the, 
through my link tree. I think you can contact me. I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Can you do that? Can you contact? Yeah, there's a, there's an email button, I think. Is there? Yeah, should do. I think. In any case, you can hit me. I'll I'll see it. No matter what, I'll see it. Right? If if you hit me up on uh, on, on Instagram, on on whatever, I'll I'll see it. Um. Zella says your excitement is infectious. It better be, man. It it better be. Um. Jarrett says I know that limitation breeds creativity. Do you find yourself picking random limitations? Or do you know what you like well enough to easily find constraints? That's a good question. So, gosh. Well, this is per this is the perfect stream to talk about this stuff, right? Because we're talking about world building. And I'm showing you all these ideas about this strange world. So, so let's consider... Oh, yeah, I was doing, like, under the under the bridge people like strange people which i redesigned this uh i'm redesigning the manta ray cape guy to be like a, a better design making him taller more looming that kind of stuff fixing him um but yeah so let's take a moment and answer that question about limitation uh oh jake says yeah that would be interesting i've only had old man mentors and your energy is indeed infectious <laughs> Dude, old man mentors are great. Uh, they can be. It can be a little out of touch. It can be a little out of touch. My the mentors that I've chosen for myself. Oh wow! Speak of the devil, Michael Relts in the chat. Welcome, Michael. My I mentored under Michael for a bit. Michael's awesome. Um, I made a I made a PowerPoint presentation to convince Michael to take me as a mentee, and it worked. So, get wrecked, and I paid him because I really appreciated his services because I'm so much better for it. Actually, I made this project while I was mentoring under Michael. This project was right after I did that whole thing. And it wasn't a technical mentorship. It was a purely like, uh, like, I don't know if you remember Michael. It was like, it was like a pretty much just like talking about like what I want to do, like who I want to be as an artist. It was like pretty intense. Gandalf of art in chat <laughs> yeah exactly um we just talk and yeah exactly but it was so helpful like having a mentor is so helpful I really believe that um but yeah so limitations finding limitations so for me I am deeply 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 interested in story and what story has to what story has the capacity to do for a person um, because I find myself, I found myself uniquely, maybe not uniquely, deeply impacted by characters and story. Like I would watch Peaky Blinders and like get my life together because like I, I want to be, I got to be more like Tommy Shelby. I got to get on my, I got to be the mastermind, right? Or I would go through a story like Coco and at the very end just be like an absolute tears because it's kind of like my, that's Coco's kind of like my life story a little bit without the death, but it's like musician father but it's just it's a whole thing man it's like very similar story and like those moments or that impact on me was so deep that when i approach limitations in world building when i approach all this stuff how so much of it is what is the opportunity what are the opportunities that i'm granting myself through specificity and limitations that will give something to the reader. So for instance, Fish World, the story, it's number one, fun, because you're kind of able to give someone a window into, oh, airplane or helicopter passing overhead. Hmm. We're visited, we're being watched, guys. We're breaking out of the matrix, we're being watched. The CIA is after me. Um, but yeah, so like, even with fish world there's kind of like themes of societal oppression there's themes of identity there's themes of addiction there's themes of like um there's a lot of themes here that a lot of people can relate to i don't have any specific hero characters yet this is just for the world um lashy says is that freedom coming to new york yeah exactly freedom's arriving guys 
Seth says, you and Steve and Sabata have inspired me to really dig into learning about story. I'm reading some books on screenwriting and listening to Brandon Sanderson writing lectures right now to learn more. That's really good. That's excellent. Don't yell oil. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, limitations. The more you learn about story, the more you know what limitations are going to do for your story. And you're going to find yourself being a lot more instinct, uh, instinctive about grabbing those things. So you're not like, my character ha it had a tragic backstory and they're, they need to, you know, like uh, go get the magic orb to do the thing. Like that's fine, right? And that can be like the main series of events that happen. But in terms of the world that you're living in, you're not going to be reaching for generic solutions if you if you know what your choices are going to give you. But yeah, so let's talk about these guys. These are kind of the, I, I titled this uh, <laughs> folder rich bozos because these are the guys who like maybe run the town, right? Where they're kind of like decorated in these materials that kind of reflect what they do. You know, this guy uh, in the purple might be kind of in the sort of like iron works of the town, right? Because they're, they're mining into the black rock to build the city up. And, ooh, what will that do to the creatures that are listening? Oh, will that make them upset? You don't know. Is it like a Lady Eboshi style situation about this town? What's happening here? Um, we have the salvage man who kind of uses everything no one else will use. And he's he's built his wealth via that means. And all the rich people are like, ooh, that guy's kind of gross. But they need him, so he's allowed to be around. But it's like a weird elephant in the room thing. You know, maybe we have this guy who's like in charge of, uh, you know, whatever kind of like he's he's in charge of the airships. He builds all the all the brass airships or the, the brass plated um, airships and stuff that or the copper plated ones that kind of like fly around and stuff like. So he's he's the richest of them all because he controls the food, controls the economy through these like flying things. So even amongst the, the wealthy, you see disparity. And this is all in my head. Like I haven't written any of this down because for me, sometimes when I put it on the page, it dies. Like it's gone and that, that can be a powerful thing. And it can also be a, a detrimental thing for sure. Jake says, I wish I had a fish hat, dude. Don't we all, don't we all, I think I had tried to design like one that was based on like sea glass. So they had like a weird glass work design, but it, like you can just see how stiff this is. Also, I had one based on like eel skin. Like if a woman had was in charge of like eel skin leather manufacturing because you only have the materials that are in the ocean. So the, all the leather that you have is eel skin. That's why I designed the City Watchers the way I did. If you look at them, it's all eel skin. Those kind of long strips of leather. That's a, that's a design constraint based on material. Um, but yeah, these guys need an overhaul. I was, I was out of the zone when I did those designs. And then I thought, well, who's manning these airships, right? Let's do some cool dudes. So I started designing these kind of ideas of like this sort of relationship between these. Um, Seth says, do these guys sit around all day and scheme like the industry leaders? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Maintain control. Maintain the status quo. That stuff is uh, super common for sure. So the ideas behind these guys were essentially the net wrangler who's closest to the action, closest to the ocean, all that stuff, right? The most dangerous place to be is in the most intense um, kind of like uh, gear. He's got the most intense mask to protect him from hazardous fumes, potentially from the ocean. He's got the visor. He's got the whole thing, right, to kind of protect him. The spotter has these kind of like, you know, telescoping uh sort of goggles that flick up and down so you can kind of see and look for the uh, the schools of fish to fire the nets at. And we have the pilot who mans the ship itself. Um, and then we have various masks. These masks were designed, this was the last thing I think I did for the world where I was like, you know what, let's just do some cool masks, right? I think three of them are successful. The one I don't think is successful is uh, is this one. This one's kind of meh. Like this, this is good because it has a great ratio of like material. This one's good because it's like a cool design. It's almost like bug-like, like crustacean-like. And this one is just like, you know, it's classic, dude. Classic octopus design. This one, what's really going on? Um, but hey, you can't, they're not all winners. And this is why we do multiple iterations to kind of find the right designs. 
love the colors yeah dude um oxidized copper and leather just like really cool man super cool all righty so let's do some actual designing we've been going for <laughs> what like an hour now almost an hour just reviewing gosh goes to show how much i've done for this world so let's kind of like break out of the zone here and maybe not do some stuff that's kind of static on the page. Oh yeah, I wanted it to call it cycloid cycloidal psychosis when you get the the fish scales on you. Like that was what I was gonna call it. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. And then I think just a note to myself: copper brass patinas, glass eel skin hat. Yeah, I was like making notes for myself. So we have all that stuff there. Um, and now. Gosh, and it all started from this guy. The whole world spawned from this guy, right? So that's a great example of explorative world building. Like, how cool is that? That's that's pretty pretty darn awesome, if you ask me. Um, Seth says, do these guys sit around a table? Oh, no, that was before. Seth says, I love the colors. I love how I get a sense of the material, even though it's pretty simple. Yeah, that's when I was, you know, I was really trying to practice my uh, my kind of hard round discipline and kind of my concept discipline just to kind of be like fast ideas, super loose, fast ideas, super loose, not care too much about render or anything. Manu says, I'm not writing a chat because I'm actually screaming at how cool everything is. Oh, that's sick. I'm so glad. <laughs> that's cool. Um, but yeah, so that's like, that's the rundown of, of, of what we did for Fish World, man. And that was in the span of about a month when I produced all this stuff. Uh, so I was doing a lot every day, just kind of figuring out stuff, right? I kind of tried to pull everything together in this strange document, I think, where I wanted things to fit on a vertical A4 sheet of paper or like I wanted it to fit in a certain aspect ratio. And I might kind of continue with this design or this kind of uh, presentation, but we'll see. We'll kind of see what goes on. But I think we can just kind of concept of about stuff. Oh, yeah, I was doing an idea of like, what if what if uh, you see the interior of the cockpit? Here's the pilot back of the pilot's head. You're kind of seeing out a little bit and then you kind of switch to another shot. This is kind of like a keyframe setup, right? And then he's like, uh, oh, this is something's in the water. I don't know what it is, right? He's on the bottom of the ship. He's looking down and uh, he's like, he's like, oh, you know, he, he's like deploying the flare and when the flare goes out, maybe like a giant sea creature, you can't see it because I barely did any work on this, but let's just draw it in for fun. Let's say, right, there's like this giant, you know, like a red sea creature that's like, wah, wah, comes out of the water, right, and bites the flare, the flare that's like, psh, psh, and the ship is like flying away to get away to show the scale of what's in the ocean, why they have to be so careful, why it's such a risky job to go and fish for these like rare fish and these rare materials. There are things in the ocean that you just don't even know, right? So something to increase the level of dread, the true level of dread in this world is that, you know, if we were to have the town be on this like little plateau, right, in the middle of nowhere, and, uh, you know, you have like the little town, blah, 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 little lights and everything like that. And there's all these, you know, the boardwalk and everything. And this is the ocean. Like what kind of creature would be in the water? Like what kind of giant, giant creature would be in the water? Like these are the kind of things where we're like, oh, my God, like what is that? Like super terrifying things, right? What's out there, man? What the heck is it? What's keeping everyone on this island so locked in, close together, that's forcing this kind of economic, you know, like a uh, vertical split, like this absolute disparity? Because no one can leave unless you get a ticket. It's way too expensive. No one can afford it. So people come in for tourism to Fish World, but they stay at the top level. They don't leave, right? This is a bunch of, it's just all stuff in my head. In any case, so let's kind of mess around here. So we kind of have... We have our kind of crab guy, or we have our eel, our kind of eel sister characters. We kind of got crab guy going on. Like, uh, we have this sort of manta ray dude, all that fun stuff. Like, they're maybe, they have like a whole underworld mob, you know, like as above, so so below. You know, you have the, the hierarchy of rich people on top, and then the hierarchy of like uh, crime at the very bottom. You know, how that kind of like parallel and they interact, but not really kind of kind of deal
but yeah, if you're interested in world building, or you have a world that you're building and you really want to develop it or whatever, like, yeah, I'm totally taking mentees right now. We'll work out something that is like fits for everyone's budget. I really want everyone to succeed in their project. And encouragement goes a long way. Um, but also, you know, if you want to just improve your critical thinking and stuff, we are doing more activities in the discord coming soon so if you want to join the discord it's just three bucks a month you know <laughs> it's like ha half a new york coffee and you can join our our wonderful community oh seth's gotta run dude take care take care seth all right, so we've talked about a lot of past work. Now let's think. Think about who these people could be. Best way to do it is just to start drawing. So we're going to use the same brush we've been using for all the other characters to kind of keep ourselves in the same aesthetic zone. So I'm trying to think like we want the leader of the kind of underworld to feel very stoic, like like a like an immovable object, like like no one could take his place. He has so much gravitas, so much intensity, right? And when you're looking for traits like that, you want to have strong brow, like really strong brow. And like a powerful, strong demeanor, right? Maybe you don't even really see his eyes that much because the, the shadow is kind of like so intense. We can kind of start that way. Hyomu, welcome Hyomu. We're going to think pretty blocky and chunky for these designs. What's crazy is that it's like it was so cold last week in New York. And now, what is it right now? It's 82. How is it 82? 50% humidity. Ah, not nice. But yeah, so let's see here. Let's see here. Strong presence, right? Hair. A bald character also has gravitas, right? Their own kind of gravitas. So we could make him bald in theory. Right, and this guy has a kind of manta ray cloak. And the manta ray has these things that kind of hang down in the front and we want that to kind of like be the part that kind of hangs over him in the front. Very wide, very wide character. Large, large silhouette, but like coming to a peak. But with an old kind of face. He's been here. He's been here for so long. Maybe he was the first. Maybe he was the first one on the island, right? The first, the first settler. But you don't know that till later. Before the industry people came and took it over, he was the first one there, and he knows the land. He knows the ocean. He knows the lands because he got there by boat. So he like had to know the seas. And maybe he teaches you these ways. Who knows?
Or maybe he got there in like an early, early airship that couldn't leave. And he survived on the island. Then when, when people came with more resources, he like taught them how to live. And they used his knowledge, but like cast him into the, under the city. Like he never, he got done dirty. Maybe, maybe that's his lore. Cool. All right, we're getting somewhere a little bit. We can also think that someone like this, someone who is kind of like maybe pseudo ruling over these people at the bottom, like he would have some kind of, I don't imagine him to be this kind of like humble leader. We really want a true parallel to like as above, so below. So we do want... Maybe he has, you know, maybe he's blinged out. Even though he's at the bottom, he's, like, more blinged out than most people at the top. But he, like, almost, this is just his home now. So he's got these, like, beautiful, opalescent, gorgeous, beautiful, like, you know, scales and shells and all manner of beautiful things, right? Because we can take from this world we can take the beauty of the ocean and we can dial it up to 11 because it's fantasy right so you can push everything the vibrancy of everything so we can even have a beautiful dichotomy or a beautiful balance between this dark man this cured kind of manta ray cloak and the sort of like ultra vibrant interesting jewelry that's happening And he's like unswayed by the euphoric effects of all the fish stuff. Like he doesn't need it. Like he already went crazy and kind of came back. So he's like, he's, he's kind of immune to it a little bit. Maybe, maybe that's his lore. Also, he has like weird ocean knowledge because he's been tripping on the, on the fish goo for a little too long. Gamelord asks, have sharks already been implemented in the fish world? I mean, there's definitely going to be, sh you got to have sharks, right? Sharks are the coolest, coolest cr cats in the ocean, man. They're terrifying. Sharks are terrifying. They're so scary. Have you ever seen, I remember watching Planet Earth when I was a kid and watching the great whites get the seals. It's terrifying. Oh, see you later, Lashy. Much love, buddy. Dude. The seat, like, when those, when those, the maw of the shark comes out to, like, chomp the seal, that's, like, truly terrifying. But thanks for letting me know, Lashy. Thank you for watching the VOD. Thank you so much. Guys, also, oh my gosh, the support has been incredible, guys. Like, this is, you know, great time to say, like, if you like the stream, definitely hit the like button. If you learn anything on these streams, I would love to know what you learn. Definitely let me know in the comments for sure. But, oh my gosh, like, I am so, so grateful for all the support. Like, it's been, it's been unreal. Um, we hit, like, 1K last week, and it's just more people keep coming. And it's, it's just really, really exciting. And I'm glad that these are actually worth for people and stuff. And we're, like, we're close. We're getting pretty darn close to hitting our goal of 4,000 watch hours so the channel can get monetized. <laughs> still not monetizable um which hey if you want to support the stream you can join the patreon if you want um oh yeah i'm gonna do more tiers i'm gonna launch the tiers on thursday there's gonna be three more tiers added um hg says sharks can be weirdly cute from a distance at least some of them can like some 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 sharks can <laughs> they can <laughs> They can look cute, but man, they can just be absolutely terrifying. 
absolutely terrifying, especially because it's like, it's not just the, how it looks, right? It's that you're in the water, you're a mammal, you're a land mammal. And this shark can close like 30 feet in like two seconds with you. You know, it could just, it could just get there and just like get, it could just get you. Like that's, that's terrifying. It's a terrifying thing. Um, they had a great bit in, uh, in primal where they get attacked by a, uh, Megalodon shark. It's so scary. <laughs> it's just like Gendy Tartakovsky style 2d animation, but it's truly so scary. All right. We're going to give this guy's beard a little more chunk. We're going to make it come out a bit. Have a bit more body to it, a bit more edge. like a cool medallion some other cool bling and whatnot we'll give him some cool bling it could even be that like maybe he has even like some scales in his skin that give it like a really interesting like pattern like what if what if because that's a good question right so wait 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 there were some more questions i missed Man who says, oh, you can come back from the from the fish scale disease. Well, that we're figuring it out. Maybe, maybe they do. We're discovering it in real time because we're just being open and we're world building, right? He almost says, sharks weren't common here in my country at all. Maybe only in the South. So I never feared them. But ever since the worsening of global warming, they've been pretty common. Oh, interesting. And he says, like tattoos. Yeah, like tattoos, but you can't control it. Like, so for instance, if his head, if we're looking down at him, his ears are here. Nose is here. If we're looking down, bushy eyebrows. Big, big goober. Um, what if he had like a cool kind of pattern? Like just something weird, right? And then like maybe the back of his head. Would it like continue down and then like joined his spinal column almost? Whoa, wait, whoa. Whoa. What if like it made your skeleton like all like uh, pearlescent? Whoa. That's interesting. If the scales we're like an extension of the skeleton and like it, it made this kind of pearlescent opalescent, like cool design. Whoa. So like it followed your invertebrae or your, not your invertebrae, your vertebrae followed your spine down. Yeah. See, we're figuring it out. Like this is what we're figuring out. Right. And what am I doing? I'm scribbling lines, but this is like, this is what it's all about. Right. Oh, Emmy says I have to head off now, dude. Enjoy, enjoy your day, and yeah, enjoy the vod. Definitely enjoy the vod. So, okay, wait, I have another question for you guys because so I've learned recently that with the YouTube algorithm, it doesn't like push a stream past like until like right after it went live. Like it'll be pushed for like a day, but then it won't really get pushed after that. And I'm wondering like, should I re-upload the streams as videos when they're done, or, or like, what should I do? Or should I just leave it? Or one thing I was wondering is, like, maybe I should, like, when I'm done streaming, quickly just, like, cut out a lot of the pauses and a lot of the time where it was wasted or whatever and just kind of, like, put up from, like, a two-hour video. Maybe it's, like, a 40-minute video or something of, like, the kind of highlights or 
important things that happened. I don't know. I'm wondering if that would be better for people. It'd be an interesting editing journey for me. Force me to edit, which maybe I don't want to do. But uh, there's 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 an idea. Who knows? You should have put them as speed paints and highlights. <laughs> maybe. Speed paints, you kind of got to do like a few things with the uh, speed paints and stuff. All right, maybe, maybe I'll start making highlight videos. Because I'm thinking like, what if I... I could do it like... Um, I make the streams only available for the patrons, but then I put up the highlights, but the full lengths are all on the Patreon or something like, but I put the highlights up on YouTube. I don't know. I'm still figuring out the best way to see if this could be a full-time thing. Let's see. Manu says, I bet some people would do stuff would like to do stuff with those pretty bones. Yeah, right? There's got to be some super freaky stuff happening. HG says, so do these bones of the infected have value on the black market or something? I'm thinking it's probably just cosmetic. Just because then you're adding, like, a lot of, like, you know, spooky narratives. Like, uh, you know. Like how in some regions, like, they'll take, like, albino people and really, like, mutilate people and stuff. Like, maybe we don't. Maybe Maybe we stay away from those narratives. But uh, but who knows? Manu says, I think that would be cool for new people, but worse for your watch hours, maybe, because those people would watch the recaps, highlights instead of the VODs. Well, here's the thing, right? Is it better for a thousand people to watch a two hour video or would it be better for, you know, 10,000 people to watch a 40 minute video? That's the thing. If it's unable to actually reach people, if the streams aren't able to reach people, maybe it is better to re-upload as videos. And like have that be the format for a while, you know, aside from, you know, I'm going to do some more curated videos as well, but you know what I mean? I'm, I'm wondering. Marcus says, I think most people find you because of the stream, but definitely re-upload as videos. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Good to know, guys. Good to know. Appreciated. Appreciated. Because then in the highlights, I could probably cut, like, a lot of the talking to chat and a lot of the other stuff and just kind of have it be the good stuff. But it would require another two hours of my time to cut it down. Ooh, like, more than two hours. Like, three hours. Two-hour stream, three-hour cut down. That's doable. That's so doable. Am I crazy? That's so doable. But yeah, that's an interesting idea, this kind of opalescent look. Maybe it comes in on the face too. Like maybe it comes in like on the front. Starts to kind of come around, almost like a third eye esque motif, which I do maybe a little too much. But hey, we're allowed. Do we hear here? The nose as well on the bridge of the nose for the him, I think would be good. Yeah, all right. We're really getting somewhere with this guy. Fish World is reborn, guys. Fish World is, is out of the attic and on the kitchen island getting organized right now. That's what's happening. Hey, Bazzy, welcome. Long time no see. Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Oh, oh. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I missed a message from my absolute love. Oops. <laughs> All right, boom, baby, let's go back at it again so we're, we're kind of figuring out who this guy is right he's got this manta ray cape thing flows down we've kind of got this strange idea for his face how it will go all right all right i like it personally 
I like it. Give them bigger nostrils. I just kind of want to. Maybe those are too big. Yeah, something like that. Something weird. Strange, even. But yeah, this guy's been here for a long time. Do we give him a little tuft of hair? Kind of humanize him a bit? I think we do. I think we do. But a little bit. Not too much. This does a lot for a character. Adding a little bit of hair. Does more than you think. In terms of blood, it can be a little softer, maybe a little more cute, a little more cute old guy vibe. Not so scary. We want him to be a little relatable, right? Like you take his advice. We want you to take his advice. He has good advice. So from that perspective, we do want him to be a little bit more chill, right? A little bit more chill. Oh man, dude, people are uploading such cool art to the Discord. It's so sick. One of our new members, Frames, just dropped a sick creature. Dude, so cool. You guys are so good. So awesome. So, okay. We've kind of got some more stuff going on here. The first settler, right? We're going to use the same name that we came up with uh, later on. We're going to call him Father Ray. Father. So I'm imagining we had some sketches for him. Yeah. So we had some, right? This is like not bad. It's not really good either, you know? It's it's all right. Side. So let's work on this a bit. Bring this over. We'll get that guy. All right, so let's see here. We kind of got the cape going. We're giving him a bit more of a regal posture now. So instead of being hunched over, he's gonna be more well, let's just draw it new. <laughs> no, yeah, no worries, Jake. Dude, it's sick. I love it. Good work, man. So tomorrow we're going to do a character design challenge, but it's going to be a new one because before we've been doing just uh, random word generated prompts, and that's been testing everyone's kind of uh, visual library, but we've kind of really kind of maybe hit a zone of like, now we know we want to expand our visual library. So the next time we're going to be using random images as prompts, right? So you're going to include stuff from the random images into your design, which is a common practice. You'll see it all the time on Instagram and stuff, but we're going to be doing that for our challenge tomorrow, which will be pretty fun. Yeah. Get hyped for that. Heck yeah. And anyone can join uh, through the Patreon in the, description 
if you wish. If you wish. Let's see, let's see. So we have him here. These things kind of hang down a little bit because they're they're not too small, right? Oh yeah, it was gonna be some kind of cool design where like the, since manta rays are like this shaped, I wanted to do a cool thing where like the, the side flaps like hook onto his, uh, his hands. So depending on what else he's wearing, if his hands are kind of here, These are huge hands, which I kind of want to give him huge hands, but we'll start with, you know, not so huge hands. Jake said, oh, that's cool. I did a bunch of face character designs based on vases last month. Yeah, dude, that's that's the way, right? Always fun to steal shapes and themes and integrate them into characters. Yeah, that's the plan. Welcome, Saman. Saman's back. Saman, our super fan. Saman, the OG, the realist. Welcome, buddy. So let's say we got I gotta do more hand drills, man. If there's one thing you want to be really solid in your character design, it's the hands. Hands and face, that's where everybody looks. So his cape flows down, down his arm, and the long part of the manta ray like hooks in. It's like a cool part of the the wrist garment. And then flows back where the tail trails behind the stingers trails behind, right? Oh, Steven Sharkov says, great stream again. Quinn, all right. I'll go with I'll go by Quinn. Sure. I'll be off my class. Excited to implement your tips. Let's go. Nice. Nice. All right. As much as I want him to have huge hands, we'll bring it back down to earth a little bit here.
Yeah, you're right, Sam. And we got some new we got some new peeps. People just keep showing up. It's great. We love them. We love our our new friends. If you guys are new to the stream, welcome. So happy to have you here. Definitely, you know, subscribe and come back. Subscribing's free. It's fun. He could have handmade it oversized eel skin gloves so you could keep the big big hands. It's true. There's always a way. There's always a way. He almost says your design input is really helpful to me. Uh I have like a couple of pages of original characters to submit for a uni evaluation and your tips are saving me. Oh, I'm so glad, man. I'm so glad. So glad, Yoma. That's great. So he has a similar posture and vibe to the other nobility, but he's different. It's a little different, right? Or is he? Mm. It's a psyop. It's a fish world psyop. All right, from the side, he doesn't have the kind of barrel-chested gravitas I want him to have, so let's remind ourselves that we have full use of shapes here. His hands are definitely confusing the viewer, I think. Let's try different hands. Let's try that his hands are together. Pensively. Pensively together. better definitely better all right yeah we're really getting somewhere here check this guy out he's cool Boom, boom, boom. Sam N says, is this fish world? You bet it is. Manu says, got to go make dinner. Hopefully I'll join later again. Have a fun rest of the stream. Dude, thank you so much for joining us, Manu. Take, take care, buddy. Take care. Also, shout out to all the lurkers. I love you, lurkers. You're awesome. All right, so we'll figure out some more layers of, of beauty that we can layer onto this guy beyond just the cool kind of manta ray cloak vibe. You know, we can we can do more. There's more we can do here that we'll make sure to include, right? For sure. 
But yeah, this is some this is some strong world building stuff here. Yeah, I'll make the feet smaller. That's fun. <laughs> it's a fun design. Uh, another thing we're gonna do to increase his gravitas is just to shrink his top half, makes him way taller. Makes him way. Proportion isn't just about being correct and incorrect. Proportion is tells you who the character is. All right, so we did a new sketch for Father Ray. I, I like it. I like where we're going with this guy. I like his vibe. I like the design. We're going to keep working with it here for sure. We're going to keep this bigger. He is Father Ray. We like Father Ray. He's cool. He's very cool. So, we've designed like, uh, we've designed kind of the more extravagant airships. So, let's kind of think about what would a more kind of like ratty airship look like. Maybe these guys would have it like hidden somewhere, right? So, it's got to fit underneath the, the boardwalk. It's got to fit in like a, a whole thing. So, it's like can't be too, you know, nice. <laughs> um so let's go wide right let's say it's like four wide and because it's what's his name's ship it's got it's it's designed after a manta ray Right, so it's kind of got a kite-esque feel to it, too. Part the trails behind. Vestigial stinger, if you will. Um, so let's think about it. All right, we're definitely borrowing some design motifs for some other good designs that I know of, so that's good. We can have the engines kind of poking out the front here. Or... Off to the side, maybe. Right? HG says, is he part of the church or is he named father because of his age? Presumably good relationship with the citizens. Pro definitely the latter, not so much the former. <laughs> it's funny, Simon. Sam has got a monopoly on the chat, guys. Guy's got to give him a run for his money. So let's see here. Let's see. Let's get another ship here so we can have a little point of of reference as well let's see let's grab our lure vessel guy yeah here we go all right so we have our design let's make it small put it up in the corner so we have it there. It's good to have a little reference of what we want to do, what we can do, right? So let's say our ship here, let's do maybe uh, a uh, cool view. It's going war here. Pew, pew, pew. Let's 
from below perspective shot boom just kind of making it up as we go eyeball on the perspective here Let's actually get an image of a manta ray up here so we can kind of loosely, loosely base it off of uh, base it off of one, not 100%, but just, you know, a little, little loose. Oh, oops. Let's just keep that there. Yeah, there is a way to plot this out so the perspective is perfect, but right now we're not going for perfect perspective. We just want to get something down. Make sure the idea works. If you invest like a ton of time on the early concept stage, oof, can be difficult to break out of your bad ideas when you're already deep down. You're like, I've already finished. It's all, all polished and it's all this and... I don't want to. I don't want to start over. I don't want to do this. So, yeah, give yourself an opportunity to figure it out. All right, this angle might not be good for showing all the information we want. Oh, got another plane overhead, or helicopter, or something. Let's see. It's so hot, I have to take my shoes off. Because, like, it's 80 degrees for some reason. In October. Can you, can you believe it? So this has to stay hidden, right? This uh, this design, which I kind of like. It's kind of a cool, a cool restriction. So the bottom, or do we just work it into the front? Ah, this is tough, guys. Do we want to just keep it like a cool stealth ship? Hmm. Okay, okay, let's try it. Let's make the bits that come out in the front the actual engines. Because you got to imagine like uh, above this is like a boardwalk, right? With like towns and people and all that stuff. And underneath is hidden this like ship that'll be like wow, out of the side. All right, that feel this feels cool. Um, depending on how big it is, so we need 
a cockpit, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, Grim. It just doesn't feel good. The heat is not our friend. Truly. So what could we do? We could have a classic open front. kind of a very classic design going on uh we could do that we could do what else could we do hmm let's reduce the scale a little bit make it a bit bigger so it feels like it could actually fly hmm Let's see. Let's do a top view. Top views are fun. So you got engine, engine. Trails off, kind of has a center part. Two parts next to it. Everything in threes, right? If you're gonna have like off-centered balloon things, they might as well be in threes. All right, this is cool. This is cool. What's the ship's purpose? The ship's purpose is kind of just to get around, isn't it? Not really a whole lot else going on. Ooh, let's give it landing gear. It's got to have cool, cool like pontoon landing gear, which makes it extremely dangerous. That's how it takes off, because it, it doesn't just fly statically. It like takes off along the thing. Nice. Cool. We can definitely include that in the design for sure. For sure, for sure. Been patched up. It's been kept kept afloat all this time. Kept functional. Yeah, some kind of like this, right? So it's been all patchworked to get together. Canvassed out. All that fun stuff. in the cockpit I guess we should just do what feels really natural right
Damn, you guys are spitting lore in the chat. Let's go. Lore's in the chat. Okay, so we kind of have an idea of how this will look. We can do kind of like three, three eyes pretty much. Just like three, three pilots or two pilots and one main viewer or like one main pilot and stuff. And there's a small interior. It's gotta be a small interior. It can't be like a large ship. Will make the engines feel better too, I think. More cohesive with the design. Definitely. All right, let's increase the scale by making the cockpit smaller. It's a great way to increase scale on a ship, just by making the cockpit a little smaller. Oop. Nice. This canvasy look is definitely a favorite for me for designing this kind of stuff. So we're going to continue on. Oh, Michael's back. Michael. One way to check your perspective is by simply flipping the canvas. Helps so much. Helps you catch your blind spots every single time. sick cool all right well that's another fun concept we kind of got some stuff going on here we can just kind of cut this out put it on its own layer leave behind the rest of the stuff can, like stick it in a full there you know kind of take these two designs and kind of go with them so if father ray had a ship if there's like a bandit ship it would kind of be this vibe probably What would its purpose be? Just to get around, right? To escape? The only reason, you'd only need it at like key moments in the story, right? If they had to like escape or go somewhere or something, like they could. Hidden under the, under the, uh, the boardwalk. I'm thinking maybe also like these side of the wings could like, they would, they would collapse probably so it could fit somewhere. And then when it kind of got out, then it would like unfurl, maybe kind of like inflate a little bit. The different sections would inflate these little pockets, right? So it had some natural buoyancy or something. To shelter people, maybe, maybe to shelter people, it's possible. There'll probably be some key moment in the story where they, the underworld people need to like leave, like get assistance or something, or like the main character has to escape or like go somewhere and that's one way to leave. Or maybe, you know, it's a world where if you don't have good relations with the, the overworld, this is the only way you can leave by using the underworld ship. 
Salmon asks, how advanced is the tech in this world? Um, would we in this? Oh, how the, how advanced is the tech in this? Uh, would we compare it to the real world? What year would it be? Oh, um, it's a good question. Probably a mix of probably a mix of around 1940s but some some elements being the 1940s some elements being in like the 1920s pretty much so like with these kind of aircrafts more 1940s ish and then with other areas of the world more like 1920s ish kind of vibe you know that's I think would be like the vibe here probably most likely yeah for sure for sure <laughs> no no worries Simon I got the gist I got the gist for sure well what else could we do man I'm starting to burn out a little bit guys so we'll probably call this pretty soon what are we we're almost at the two hour mark yeah okay let's see Well, let's apply a little bit of color to this, maybe. Or should we do it to our to our guy? Should we try putting some color to our guy? Yeah, maybe. Or we'll do that next time. All right, sometimes one way I like to color this is totally individual to me is uh, I like to just kind of like this is under the line art of course just kind of go a little crazy get some hues get some paint down just get some stuff down Uh, see you later, HG. Much love, buddy. We're just kind of messing around here, right? Nothing too, nothing too crazy going on. Cool. Wow. Switching into a crossed leg position. Don't want to lose circulation in our legs or anything crazy like that. Want to make sure that we're healthy, we're feeling good, our body's feeling good, we're all set. And now let's go in with kind of a brassy copper tone on certain areas of the ship, like the frame. We can kind of imagine maybe there would be some kind of metal work, maybe even like skeletal in nature, just grafting the edges of the ship here and there. And again, this is working extremely loose in the ideas phase, because if you guys remember, this is something that we're doing in kind of like under an hour here, right? Um, Sam says, is the sky in that world yellow slash brown 
No, it's not, but all we're doing right now is painting the local color. So the local color of the canvas, right? We'll have the lighter blue light and stuff reflect on certain areas that are reflective, if there are areas that are reflective. So we're painting in the copper. This is sometimes how I like to work personally. So then on this copper, let's say, like everything else in this world, it gets a pretty harsh patina. Before we do that though, let's also do it in this version here, this kind of top-down version that we want to have where we're kind of sort of accurate-ish. Simon says, oh, I see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we want to start the local color, then we'll go and maybe think about reflected light, all that stuff later if we want it to give it a particular feeling or place it in a particular zone. So now what we're going to do is we're going to very loosely, simply paint in a little bit of that kind of patina look. So we're going to take kind of a darker color, just kind of paint it in on top. You know, we'll keep it kind of cool, right? So oxidized copper, really, really beautiful material, in my opinion. I love it so much. One of my favorite materials to look at. You know, I live in New York City right now and just kind of going around looking at all the architecture I love, looking at the beautiful oxidized copper roofs, the metalwork that's done. It's a gorgeous look, right? Absolutely gorgeous look. And there's some kind of like protective properties to it, right? The patina kind of keeps it sealed from certain weather stuff and everything. So it's kind of like a natural part of the process. Grimm says, and the ship are in the sky or from the sea? So these ships are in the sky. These ones fly. This is kind of a canvas material and stuff. Designing a sea ship, it would look pretty different. But I do, one element I want to have in this world is like, and they're secretly experimenting on traveling underwater. And there's like a Mark, a Mark like 12 submarine that they've constantly rebuilt because everyone that goes out never comes back. So they're continuously trying to crack the secret of traveling underwater but there's such giant terrifying creatures underwater that they can't figure out how to do it. So we'll eventually do a submarine that maybe comes back and they're like, oh my God, one finally came back. The Mark 12 came back, you know, that kind of vibe, right? We're just loosely painting. All we're doing is painting this greenish tone over the copper. That's going to allow a little bit of the copper to bleed through. And what that does is that kind of gives a sense of the material it also kind of shows like, hey, maybe it's been kind of scratched there because if you scratch on a patinaed surface, the underneath is still that beautiful, lustrous copper. So you can kind of see like where it's been dinged, banged, you know, all that stuff. But you can kind of get a sense that, hey, you know, this is still this is still a copper, albeit oxidized, which I like. I like that aesthetic, right? And you can kind of see it here. It's got that cool feeling to it, right? We love it. We love it. Same here. We really want to paint in that Tina on the engine too, and then we'll do something else for the actual engine bit, right? Yeah, heck yeah. Go for maybe darker tone for a couple areas where we want it to be a little, just a little darker, you know, communicate form a little bit to the viewer. And again, super rough, nothing special, nothing crazy. But now what we can do is take that really beautiful high color that you see on oxidized copper and paint it in some of the areas. Wow, just so, it just adds so much character, right? Look at that, so cool. It catches light in a particular way. It's beautiful. Has so much elegance. The reason we're doing this in layers is again, even just to feel the material as we're painting it, right? Like getting into that zone, we didn't just go straight with this color 
and kind of be like, oh, well, it's oxidized copper, so it's this color. But like, we're really kind of going like, all right, well, what what's happening in the other areas? What about the areas that aren't getting so oxidized or they get hit with sea spray or this or that? And what's happening to those bits or what if it gets scratched here? Having a little bit more character when we're painting in these materials is great. And keep in mind, like, I am no painter, but I'm doing my best here. <laughs> I'm no painter, but I am a concept artist, so... <laughs> You know, and then the tiniest bits where you want to draw the eye will do little streaky highlights and stuff. This is with simple hard round brush, nothing crazy. But well, yeah, one of the uh, facets of oxidized copper is that it uh, oftentimes oxidizes with rain. So you'll see rain streaks, different streaks kind of coming around. Oh, that's awesome, Sam, man. There's lightning where you're at. That's sick. Beginning of winter. Nice. All right, so we've painted all these all this stuff in, right? If we check our values, they're pretty uniform. Nothing too crazy. Um, so now what we're going to do is cut out where we have. So we laid all this value down. We have made a bunch of choices. They're pretty, I think they're pretty good choices. I like them personally and we're just gonna lasso and it's easier to do with this big shape right but we're gonna lasso out this shape this is so fun it's like peeling off the mask to like a painting right so cool I love it so usually with a design like this you'd want to do line art that's a little bit cleaner but this isn't even line art it's like rough scribble but that's fine Again, first idea down on the page. And we're doing this in how long? Under an hour? Definitely under an hour. Where do we start this? Oh yeah, we're like half an hour in. So this is pretty good for half an hour in on a airship design. Because this is world building and concept art. It's not illustration and painting. That's a whole other thing, whole other process whole other set of decisions and ways of working right now we're actively deciding whether or not we like the materials by painting them in and trying them out Oof, gotta remember not to grip my pen so tight i've been having wrist issues the past couple days Oof, gotta be careful you do not want to mess up your wrist man i've had friends who'd have who had to take like months off of drawing because of RSI and other artist injuries that are super easy to get. So now we decide what kind of glass we use. I like the idea of using like an amber glass. It's a pretty common glass that I, I just really like the idea. It just looks so sick. It's so cool. All right, so now that we have this stuff down, um, let's do a couple little little beveling things for clarity, I guess. It's in a certain areas that need it. Not so much over here. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So this feels pretty darn real, if you ask me. Uh, the only thing we would want to do is like maybe have like some little like some little smoke coming out or something. Oh, take care, Sam, man. Much love. Oh, and Mojo's back. Equilibrium.
Okay, now we're gonna use a technique which I love, which is just using the gosh darn lasso tool and airbrush, baby. Best combo in the game. Great way to build up form, figure out where your edges are and whatnot. <laughs> nice. So we're going to take a kind of a shadow value, nothing too crazy. Painting a bit of a shadow on the back. Or do we want to do warmer, like a warmer shadow maybe? Yeah, that feels right. And again, we're just establishing forms. Nothing too crazy. This kind of stuff doesn't have to be perfect because the effect that you're giving is an illusion of reality, right? It's not reality itself. So what we're doing here is we're just describing the form through light. So we're gonna pick a much lighter value, wing it across the front. You can also hide your selection. If you hide your selection, then it's still there, but you can make changes to it. So we want something with more saturation there. Um, and that'll be control H or command H in whatever program you're using. Well, Photoshop primarily. All right, now we're gonna take the whole shape and we're going to essentially, let's make a new layer, clipping mask layer. Let's do like a multiply, easy. Gonna paint in using a multiply layer and a soft brush. Tails old as time. This is how you're gonna push things down and raise things up a little bit. Creating kind of pockets, right? To show bevels of certain areas and whatnot. You can always like kind of cut out little shapes you want a little light streak to go on. You can do that with a soft brush too. All right, we got some forms here. If we reduce the uh, color of the line art, it would actually communicate a little bit better. But yeah, so we did some stuff there. Pretty loose, pretty rough. Actually, I'm wondering if like we just wanna make it a little more homogenous even. Not have so many hard lines. Yeah, let's do that. Just gonna Take those harsh lasso tool bits, soften them up. There you go. Yeah, that feels a lot more smooth. Boom, baby. All right, so we got a cool concept here. So we got basically an airship. And then on this side with the multiply layer, all you wanna do is just do the bottom side. The bottom side, this will do so much for your, for your cool forms and stuff. Just dropping it into shadow, baby. It's in shadow. helps a lot 
and then the parts where you want to be peeking out just kind of cut them out a little bit here and there and now we've got a kind of a cool little rough sketch of a little airship vibe that we got going on kind of makes sense right stick that on the edge of your page got a little sketch boom ready to go or at least that's a good place to start right and then you can do your final line art do a proper thing or even bring it do a little 3d model of this you know nice all right maybe maybe we'll try to do some some color on this guy we could do that or we could try same technique right but this guy will start with a strange kind of greenish base i think we want it to feel a little strange going in with the hard round again we love the hard round We never decided which color's beard's gonna be. If we make it dark, that'll kind of match the manta ray vibe, but it'll take away from his his age. He won't be as old. But that is interesting. It's not not interesting, right? We can always go in and repaint another color. We'll just try this for now. Wait, so manta rays, hang on, let's look again. They're kind of dark, have this light rim around them. So this guy would have like a kind of like a light rim around, around the edge here. And then around the tips, they go kind of white here. And on the back, there are these cool designs that would go around yeah and down yo nexty welcome grim says it is giving santa i like it <laughs> so funny true He can be he can be a little Santa guy, that's allowed. Let's try a white beard. Yeah, it's a little more what we're going for, I think. The lighter beard color. We want to give him some, probably some little, some little eel skin esque detailing on his clothes. He can afford the nicer materials like eel skin. Next, he says, when you paint. Do you change your opacity often or vary your brushes more? So uh, I, I will do depending on what the project needs. This project is pretty rough still. So I'm just using basically hard round brush. Uh, and this has an opacity jitter. So you can kind of the harder you press, the more opacity you get. So I'm using that pretty much to kind of carve out shapes, set things up. You know, working with opacity, some people are like, oh, you shouldn't do it because this and that, and there's all these reasons why, and blah, 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 blah. But it's like, dude, who, no one cares. No one cares what your process is as long as your ideas kind of get down and stuff. You know, people use airbrush. That's that's opacity, pretty much. 
But yeah, so right now I'm just using hard round for painting. Brush variation though, I will switch to like an oily brush if I wanna like have a looser feel to something, but I haven't had the need to on this project yet to go to a more loose brush yet. All right, so let's start to cut some of this guy out. Oh, we're still soft brushing it. That's fine. So same technique. We can kind of start to use our mask to peel away the masking fluid we set down before. Sometimes, again, I'm going to say this. I like this more with certain characters. Like in the past, you know, you've seen me do flat underneath and then paint on top. But sometimes this, I'll make decisions that I wouldn't, necessarily make if I was doing that method. So I like to keep it loose sometimes and then kind of erase away or paint in the background rather. You know, a lot of favorite artists like Lion Decker and guys did stuff like that. So our process is really what we make of it. We're gonna select out all the dark bits and we're just gonna do a big old sh swoosh, swoosh, darkness. But yeah, I'm not really, when it comes to concept, I'm not really traditionally a painter. I do a lot of a lot more line art based designs, but I like to challenge myself. This project is definitely challenging myself for sure. Um, oh, next he says, I've been doing studies. A guy I follow has been helping, telling me to learn opacities first to mix colors properly before getting into mixing brushes. So I understand properly to manage brush better and shading color. Thank you for your answer. Yeah, I mean, if you wanna really go hardcore for real, then you'll do color pick only which is like, you're like, ooh, I want a gray here. So you're like, all right, well, let me let me choose like a gray. But you're like, no, that's not the right gray. So then you go in and you choose like a weird warm gray and you paint it in your nose. Oh, wait a minute. This warm gray is doing something really interesting. And then maybe, you know, you color pick out like a blue and you're like, oh, let's do this and that. And let's make it a little whatever. And you pick the color and all of a sudden it's like a weird purple gray. But this, this just looks like a, a blue gray, but it's actually a purple gray. And it's like, that kind of stuff is good because you'll be surprised at what colors actually are. Because uh, hue and warmth and all that stuff is relative. <laughs> this guy looks like one of my friend's dads. One of my friend's scary dads. Um... Just finished my last one, if it's okay to send the link here. Yeah, sure, go for it, buddy. Go for it. Thanks for asking. I appreciate you asking. All right, so we've got a nice little, a nice little drawing here. Boom, baby, let's go. Look at that, wow, wow. Oh, no worries, Nexty. I'm glad you're learning a lot. We're just wrapping up for today, actually. So, yeah, subscribe and turn notifications on for the next one if you want. If you wish. But yeah, I love this. We kind of fixed We kind of fixed him. Um, we'll definitely be doing more on this guy's design, too. Like, we didn't include his bling yet. Like, I'm imagining he's got some pretty interesting bling, like, like around his, uh, his wrists and at, like, the bottom of his coattails and stuff and you know he obviously had some kind of here and whatnot imagining some really cool kind of interesting combinations of kind of color and cool vibrancy and everything
man relifting the sun. I'm not a hundred percent sure what you mean by that, Grim. Like he's all out in shiny jewelry, so it makes a reflection of most things. He lights up a room. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh my gosh, Willow, welcome. Long time no see. Hope you're well. <laughs> oh, man. I feel bad. I feel bad for people who joined right when we're about to end. We're right about to end, Willow. Yeah, you're right. This would have an effect like lighting up a whole space around and having those cool things. You know those cool little prism globey things you can put in your window that kind of dazzles other stuff? Like it would probably be like that too. Probably a lot of that kind of lighting going on in this world. It's a good point. Very interesting. Thanks for reminding me of stuff like that. That's cool. Well, all right, guys. We definitely did a lot today. We kind of reviewed and we continued to concept in this strange underwater world of fish and weirdness. And I really appreciate everybody sticking through, sticking along, and, and uh, finding it interesting and stuff. I need to go make some food because I'm about to die. <laughs> but this was good. Yeah, just review-wise, we went through the whole project, and then we uh, did a couple cool cool designs. We did this guy, and we did a cool ship. Like, that was so fun. I love this ship. Like, I feel like uh, we, we pumped it out pretty quick, and it was, like, really fun, which was nice. Mo just says, sorry, I wasn't super active in chat. Dude, oh my, you know, no one has to ever write in chat, ever, by the way. It's only if you guys have questions or anything. No no pressure. But um, I just, you guys are awesome. You guys are great. And this has been a really fun stream. And uh, I'm going to come back again on definitely Thursday. I'm, I'm wondering if I want to do only two streams a week and put more focus in on the, the Discord community because it's been growing a lot and... Uh, I just like, I really want to make sure that like, you know, yeah, people are getting their money's worth and also like just having fun community stuff going on. So yeah, I really appreciate everybody joining the discord to the Patreon and stuff. You guys are awesome. And, uh, I hope you get something out of these streams. I might try the, um, the idea of doing the highlights. I might try doing that. Um, Oh, next he says, I got to get a subscribe for the Patreon. Oh, dude, that would be awesome. But no pressure. No one has to join. But if you want to join the community, it's a fun community. Uh, so, yeah, cool. <laughs> I appreciate everybody, all the viewers, everyone, and everyone who contributes to the Patreon. Like, you're making this possible. It's like I can actually see how this could be a full-time thing if it continues the way it's going. So you guys really make that possible. And, like, seriously, thank you. Um, yeah, no worries. All right, yeah, we'll be back next time, and uh, you guys are awesome. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out, guys.